can see it from every angle that you come in to Rutherglen. On every rail you can see that wine bottle. A lot of look upon it as a sort of an icon, uh, a dominating feature in the landscape. And, uh, particularly when you look at it from a distance, driving in from Albury, uh, you see this tower standing up against the sky and uh, that tells you that you're nearly home. I think it's the most wonderful thing that's in Rutherglen and I would hate to see it go. It's not pretty, but I love it. It's such a wonderful landmark. I've been living here for 47 years, and this is the best neighbour you could possibly have. In its heyday, the wine bottle was used as a water storage for the area of Rutherglen. It came about because of Lake King water was unsuitable for use and no one was buying it. So they elected to build a tower here on the hill to bring it in from uh, the Murray River. The tower itself holds 92,000 gallons and it was brought in to serve about 1,100 people at that stage. It was an extremely big project in its day and it was primarily for health and to get a good water system or a better water system into the town. I've got photos here that were taken in the morning that the uh, top went on the bottle and if you'd like to have a look at them there they are. We were all there this morning that the top went up at six o'clock in the morning and uh, they swung it round to the north side. It wouldn't go on because of a bulge in the pipe. So they swung it round to, I suppose it's the south side and up it went. The Wine Festival Committee back in the 60s were looking for a way of advertising the wine festivals of the day and it was decided that we would try and do something a bit gimmicky, I guess, but as a good advertisement and the uh, top was installed imitating a, I think it was an ancient claret bottle. When we came to live within a stone's throw of the bottle, we weren't sure for a day or two just what to make of it. We weren't used to having one of these in our backyard, but although it was big and pretty bare, built to be functional, not ornamental, still it wasn't at all intrusive or offensive to the eye. It was somehow reassuring almost company just being there. This tower wasn't put there to outdo a neighbouring town, to show that higher is better as some cities seem to think. It's part of our past and our present. When the children were growing up and uh, somebody would yell out, the tower's running over, and that meaning the water would be pouring down here and that we had four children and they'd run out with jars and tins and fill them up with little fish and uh, generally have a good time in all the water running down the hill. Cousin was a plumber in Rutherglen at the time. He had to do a job on the tower here. And anyway, he got up there and uh, looking around and he couldn't believe his eyes. Turned out to be a codfish. They went up the pipe, up in it. It must have been a small fish at the time. And it's there that long that it grew to about that length. So anyway, he said, I'll have that. He said, if I left it there, it'd die. <laughs> in the intervening years after they first built this, they ran out of water here, as in they never had a, a big enough tank, so they built another tank further up the hill, a big underground storage tank into the side of the hill, and this tank then became just an emergency storage for Rutherglen, and it was also used when we were cleaning the other reservoir out and the last time that it was used was in 1975 when I was operating the water system here and we used this as a temporary storage while we cleaned the main reservoir. Certainly while I was working here in the 70s um, I got a lot of visitors called in at this site to have a look inside the winery bottle and to also have a ask questions of course. I think I was a bit, little bit of a tourist information centre some days. So in that sense to Rutherglen, it's, it's 
had quite a valuable contribution to our tourist industry. Not too many towns have a, a structure like this in the centre. I find it very attractive. It's a marvellous structure to paint and uh, it's got this lovely burnt sienna colour about it, juxtaposed against the nice blue sky behind and the green grass in front of us. And I love particularly the view looking up Hopeton Road. It's a good subject for a watercolour painting. I guess with all great things that as they get older and age has started to catch up with the water tower, it's now developed a few structural problems, particularly in the steel tank and there's certainly some investigations being carried out to continue its life and I guess we can only hope that that comes to fruition and that something is done to save it. I know it's going to be a lot of money to keep it there, but uh, it means a lot to me because my husband worked on it. Uh, no, I'd hate to see it go. It wouldn't be the same because you've heard from everybody, all the children of the area always have competitions. I can see the tower first and uh, it's just a welcoming sign. My kids call it their beacon. Yeah, the beacon. As they're yeah. coming from whichever yeah. direction, there's yeah. the tower, yeah. there's the water bottle, there's the wine <laughs> bottle, and, and they're home. That's right, we're home. It's always there, it's always standing tall and strong, and it's, it, it, it's what represents our town and the great community feeling that our town has. I've lived here 73, 74 years, and that tower was here when I first came. Doesn't matter which way you come from Rutherglen, you see you can find your way home. And it's been wonderful to me and my children. I've got nine children, and um, I think it's the most wonderful thing that's in Rutherglen. I had a mate, I'll never forget him. He, he, was, he was like a monkey. He'd go up right to the top, look in the top, and come back again. So that's about all I can say.